Okay, again, we're continuing with our uh, Python 3 tutorials. Uh, I'm recording this uh, in late uh, 2013. And uh, originally I was thinking this is going to be like a around a three month, you know, series. But uh, the more I'm working on it, more I think it's probably going to be longer than that. Uh, but every Wednesday I'm putting out a new video. So if you're watching this playlist, which there should be an annotation on the screen for the playlist, if you're watching this uh, in 2013, or 2014, I may still be working on these videos, so can be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out as I add new ones every Wednesday. Um, now, the thing we've been working on in the last uh, tutor two, t two tutorials uh, is writing to and reading from files. Uh, but as we discussed, you know, when you go to write to a file, if you're not appending, if you're writing to it, uh, if the file doesn't exist, it's going to create it. Uh, but if it does exist, it's going to override it. Um, so now there's a lot of different ways to check whether a file exists, whether you can write to it. Uh, you can use um, the OS module, which we'll get into in future tutorials, to see if a file exists. But just because it exists doesn't mean that you have permission to read or write from it. So you want to be able to check for, uh, you know, if you're able to, you know, good. If you can't, then do something else. And um, we haven't gotten into any if-then statements or while loops or for loops. Um, and really, I probably maybe should have reviewed on those before we got into this, but if you're coming from some other programming language, you're probably used to writing if-then statements or other types of statements like that and using like uh, some sort of braces or brackets to uh, indicate this is the section of that. You, as you look at Python code, you'll realize that there aren't, there isn't that. And the reason for that is that Python uses indentation uh, to acknowledge uh, you know, sections of code, um, which has its pluses and minuses. The good thing is it keeps you, you know, from, it, it keeps you programming cleanly uh, because it's very easy to get lazy and not indent every time you should. Um, but with Python, you can't do that. You have to indent. It's kind of annoying sometimes if you're trying to copy and paste code from a website to try out. Uh, sometimes the indentation gets messed up and then you got to adjust it before the code will work. So there's, there's pluses and minuses to it, but it definitely if you're writing the code out yourself, it's forcing you to keep it clean. Um, but today we're going to look at a, a try accept statement. I'm not sure if that's the, the proper term for it, but that's what I'm calling it. Uh, so hopefully you've watched the previous tutorials on reading and writing from files. But today what we're going to do is we're going to type in try, and again we're working in the uh, interpreter itself interactively. Once we get this tutorial done, next week we're going to take everything we learned and actually write out a script using it. Um, but here we're saying try. So we hit enter and you see that our prompt changes from three greater than symbols to three periods, three dots. Uh, and that's indicating that we're within that, uh, that section of the statement. And we want to indent. You can use space or tab if you're in an editor and using tab, lots of times you want to change your editor to use spaces rather than tabs um, to avoid problems down the line because not every program uses the same spacing for tabs. But we're in the interpreter here, so that's not an issue now. We'll, we'll talk about that more in the future, most likely. Um, but here we're, we're saying try, and then we're saying try this. So everything that's indented below this is going to be part of this try. So in the previous tutorial we said um, f equals open and then inside parentheses we'll give it a file name and we'll say file.txt. That's the file that we have been working with and it should exist at this point. And I'll say let's read it uh, and then I'll say f.read uh, and yeah, we'll read it. This will put it out all in one line, uh, since we're not throwing it into a variable, just one long string. Uh, and then we'll say f.close. Now, we're done with that part of it, so we don't indent anymore, and we'll say uh, accept. And then we'll say io error, just like that, capital I, capital O, capital E, lowercase r, r, o, r, and then a colon here. Enter. And we'll say tab, or indent, I should say. Indent, uh, print, and we'll say print no file. 
and I'll hit enter here, and when I hit enter again, it will run all of this. And so what it's going to do is going to try this. And if for any reason this fails, uh, which the main reason would be this first line that the file doesn't exist, which it does, uh, it will do this. So what should happen, since the file uh, does exist, uh, if I didn't delete it since I did the last tutorial, uh, <laughs> it's going to try to open the file, print the file as one string on the screen, and then close it. But if for some reason something goes wrong in that, uh, with the most likely the opening of the file here, it's going to say, uh, yeah, if there's an error, an IO error, go ahead and print no file. So we'll hit enter here and we should see the contents of that file. There we go, we got the content of that file. Uh, and then this line here, this little error, that's my fault because I forgot the parentheses there. Um, so that error doesn't affect, so I'll close the file there, the IO error because it's, uh, the IO error is indicating when it comes to the reading and writing of the file, not the closing of the file. So even though we had an error there, that didn't stop that statement because it wasn't an IO error. Hope that makes sense. So let's do the same thing, but let's say we try to read the file of a file that uh, doesn't exist. So we'll say try colon, and then on the next line we're going to indent f equals open, and we'll give it a file. I'll just say blah 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 dot txt, which does not exist, and we'll say r for read. Again, this is um, because we're trying to read it and it doesn't exist. If we're trying to write to it, uh, then we shouldn't have a problem because we'll create the file unless for some reason we don't have permission to write to the folder or something like that. Um, so, got to keep that in mind that um, if we were writing, it'd be a different situation because it won't fail unless you don't have permission to write there. Or I'm sure there's other reasons, but that's the one that comes to mind. So, we're going to open the file to read. We'll read it. We'll close it, and then we'll say, well, except, do all that, unless there's an IO error, in which case we can do a bunch of other things, but in this case we'll just print again, no file. I'll hit enter, it hasn't run yet, but when I hit enter again, since I'm not indenting, it knows we're done, and it'll run all that. And it says no file, because this file does not exist. So. Um, that's pretty much it for this tutorial, kind of simple. Uh, I think I explained it well, I'm not gonna explain it again, I guess. Um, but next week, we'll actually take everything we've learned in the past five or six uh, videos and put them all into an actual script file, make it executable and run, and I'll also talk about reasons making things executable and how it works different from operating system to operating system because I see a lot of people making small mistakes because they're not thinking uh, outside of their operating system, which as a programmer, you, you need to. You need to, to, number one important thing, in my opinion, when it comes to programming is compatibility. Uh, and there's no reason your code shouldn't be compatible with pretty much every operating, at least every major operating system out there. Uh, Windows, Mac, Linux, BSD, you know, Android, iPhone, because I'm pretty sure you can install Python, iPhone. I know you can for Android, uh, but if you couldn't, that's a limitation of that operating system because of the restrictions on it. But I'm I'm pretty sure if you at least if you root it or jailbreak it or whatever you want to call it on iPhone, you can get Python installed. So, um, but when you're writing your Python code, if you don't write it proper or you don't do something proper, uh, it could may or may not work. Even though Python's compatible from operating system to operating system, if you won't write things properly, it may not run from operating system to operating system. So you, as a programmer, that is your responsibility to make your code compatible and check it for errors and little things like that, not somebody else's. It's it can be stressful, but that's part of being a programmer, at least being a good programmer. There's a lot of really bad programmers out there. Um, but anyway, next week we will create an actual script. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. You can go there to search through my videos playlist. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any videos. Again, I'm posting new Python videos every Wednesday for uh, months to come. Uh, and again, it's 2013 now, so if you're watching this in the future, uh, I might be doing other videos on Wednesdays, which means this playlist would be done, and there should be an annotation to the playlist on the screen. Uh, so, again, thank you for watching. Uh, let me know if you like this, these, uh, this topic by liking the video. Click the like button and subscribe so you don't miss anything. And I hope that you have 
a great day.